Jevy Lifestyle Designers, this is Zachary with Secrets of Longevity.com. If you're familiar with my work and a lot of the things I've spoken about in the past, along with the articles on my site, you'll know I give pretty equal um, emphasis to cultivating both uh, internally as well as externally. And by that I mean internally through various types of meditation and other what you call internal practices and things that work on the emotions, the mental side of things, and all that. And then I also speak about food, things you can take like superfoods, herbs, getting physical exercise in. But really, there needs to be an equal balance of both in our life. And I'd actually talk about relationships and sort of societal, um, one's role in society as sort of being on the internal side as well, because it's really reflecting and affecting your internal state. You often hear things like people that are married live longer, people that uh, live very social lives live longer, and that's because we know that when we're interacting with people in a positive way, in this way, we're really um, cultivating good feelings within ourselves, and those naturally lead to better balances of hormones and neurotransmitters flowing properly and all sorts of other chemicals that move through our body. And we want these to be optimized, obviously, and the best way to do that, instead of trying to study each thing individually and always trying to take things externally to affect us internally, we can just simply um, adhere to the internal side of life and cultivate that to be at its optimal uh, and most positive for our internal health. So I often see people trying to emphasize one over the other and make one more important than the other. But as you see from the intro of all my videos when I have that yin-yang symbol um, at the start, you, that's synonymous with balance and having equal balance between both uh, opposite ends of the spectrum of whatever that symbol is going to represent. It can represent a whole wide range of things, um, but looking at it in terms of balancing internal and external um, approaches to our health, uh, it's very good for looking at it that way. Now some people might overemphasize the external in the form of plenty of vigorous exercise, plenty of constantly focusing on diet and looking at all these other things, yet they forget to look at their relationships, their own internal way of relating to people, and then also perhaps even incorporating internal strategies and techniques and practices like meditation, uh, some other of the more internal types of yoga like the breathing, and pranayama and the uh, chakra meditation. Some people that are really heavily focused on the external almost laugh or ridicule those that choose to participate in the internal. Now I would say there's never really any need to ridicule anyone but if someone is totally focusing on the internal and they're saying well I can eat Taco Bell and my body transmutes it because I'm just a child of God or whatever. Um, that I think is appropriate to if it's someone we care about and it's in a scenario that is appropriate, we can tell them, well, that's probably not true. Let's do some blood work and see if you're actually transmuting that to a higher vibration, so to speak. So really, we want to sort of take a middle path and take examples from both sides of things uh, and incor incorporate those into our lifestyle um, to look for balance and to achieve balance and not get too caught up in these idealistic sort of grand claims that if you do this, this, and that thing, and they're all diet or exercise based and it'll cure everything and sleep is another example of an external thing so you can be doing like proper sleep, proper exercise, proper diet you, your health can still be totally trashed if your emotional state is imbalanced mind's unable to focus and you just have a complete lack of stability in your internal world same goes to say if you're um, a devout meditator and spiritual practitioner yet you don't even do any yoga, you're just sort of sitting all the time, you're going to wind up with um, issues that are related to a lack of mobility and a lack of actually moving around and having things in your body uh, moving. So that includes circulatory issues, lymphatic system issues, um, and also mus muscular bone and joint issues, especially if you're always you know, sitting hours at a time in one position. Um, the Taoists had a very interesting concept that um, nothing is ever still in the body. So I've often talked with uh, certain Chinese doctors who say that sometimes they get people that have gone on these uh, retreats where they meditate for 10 hours a day 
And they come to them with back problems because they've just come out of this thing. And yes, to an extent they're not used to doing 10 days of 10 hours a day of meditation. And I'm sure they got plenty of mental and emotional benefits from it. But their physical body, um, the muscles actually started to seize up along the spine as a result of overemphasizing that one part of health. Now, I don't want to dissuade anyone from experiencing or uh, exploring meditation by any means. And the reverse can be said about someone that's really gung-ho about everything physical in this world, yet they don't uh, take the time to address and work with the more subtle aspects of their own being, and they aren't able to sit with themselves and be quiet and let the mind settle down. They're not able to focus on any one thing for a great length of time. Uh, they don't have the ability to use their mind in ways that some people aren't familiar with using the mind. And they've just obviously never had that experience. And you don't, can't experience it unless you go there and try it out. So in our culture, a lot of people do emphasize the external more than the internal. And more and more people are aware that there's been sort of a growing movement for uh, more of the internal practices that have come more from the East. And one thing that can be said is if you are looking for something um, or you're interested in meditation or anything to address the internal, um, there's a place I feel is very key in terms of starting a foundational point. There's an article I wrote a while back on meditation. It's sort of the primer, in my view, or the basics of meditation and how one should go about just getting a start on that, if that's something you're interested in doing. Even if you're more advanced, you might get some information from that article. Because I believe if you haven't first uh, mastered this basic technique, um, you can run into issues later on because you haven't been able to full, first uh, bring in and hold your awareness in one state, um, regardless of what's going on around you externally and internally. So this is the basic sort of sit and observe meditation. This is like, um, I mean, it really actually has its basis in a wide variety of different traditions. Uh, but it's most notable in Zen meditation where they, they're basically their foundational main med meditation is just to sit and observe. And they don't put anything out and trying to stop thoughts. They don't put anything out and trying to hide from thoughts or suppress them, but just see them as they come up and then let them go when they go, but not getting caught up in it. Because the moment you get pulled into a thought and you get wrapped up and you forget that you were sitting and observing it, then it's just thinking. It's not meditation. And that's actually the original definition of meditation, is just to sit still and be quiet. Um, so it doesn't actually involve any techniques. So this is a technique-less meditation. You can start bringing in techniques once this foundation is uh, achieved, and then you can start to um, work more with the things that alter your health and the ways of optimizing and balancing the glands of the body, um, and doing a variety of other things um, that will result in variety of interesting phenomena. Um, but yeah, that foundational aspect of meditation of just sitting still and observing, in and of itself, is extremely beneficial for the health because it slowly um, lets go of micro-tension throughout the entire body. If you get up to doing this for half an hour to 40 minutes, it would be unbelievable what you might start to um, notice that goes on in your body. Places that have tension that you weren't aware of before will just start to release. Of course, these people that were doing this kind of meditation for 10 hours a day will get to a point where you want to move around. And that's natural because the body is meant to move. Um, and also, if you're sitting in a position that's not optimal, that can also affect uh, the muscles in the back. But as a side note, it's interesting to uh, mention that yoga was originally, or at least hatha, the hatha component of yoga, uh, when yoga means to yoke or to join and rejoin the entire body back together into one. Um, hatha yoga is specifically the postures that one holds to, uh, that are stretches in a way and they are actually originally meant to simply make the body more limber so that it, one can sit in meditation for longer periods of time. So meditation is a very important uh, aspect of yoga, it's a very important aspect to many Eastern traditions and many people are experimenting with it today although they go off and they're experimenting with all sorts of random practices that can be have various ranges of esotericism attached to them and they might fail to understand them or get the most benefit out of them until they've been able to cultivate this ability to actually sit still be quiet and observe without having their mind pulled into a million directions at once 
So once you're able to do that and be in one spot and be present and observing, then incorporating the Qigong, incorporating the martial art, incorporating the yoga, incorporating other internal types of practices and energy work, you're going to, number one, have much more focus. You're, second of all, going to be much more present in your body and able to hone in and focus on whatever it is you're doing. I mean, that's kind of like what I just said, number one. But that is the main benefit to this. So, again, check that article below. And I'm going to be speaking more about um, various internal type practices more in the future because it's something that I actually first brought me into health almost a decade ago. And so it's a big passion of mine. It's something I'm very devoted to doing on a daily basis. And uh, with that, I'm going to say take care and embrace life without limits.